Welcome back. All right. So today we are going to do a career video on Borier Salming. Borier Salming, a pioneer uh, who came over to the National Hockey League at a time that it was kind of a hostile situation for European-born players. Um, not welcomed with open arms by a lot of the players. And yeah, European players not really wanted in the National Hockey League. But the Toronto Maple Leafs, thinking outside the box, uh, didn't actually go over initially to look at Salming, but once they saw Salming, they're like, we have to sign this guy. So May the 12th of 1973, he is signed as a free agent. He would eventually be known as the King, right? He is, he is got, he's the King, and they're wearing those patches on their jerseys for the rest of the year in Toronto uh, that state such. But it didn't start out that way. His first year, 76 games, 5 goals, 34 assists, 39 points. Good totals. In the playoffs, he adds an assist in four games. He's third in Calder voting, and he's fifth in Norris. Well, what could be wrong? Well, the term chicken Swedes got thrown around. And this, of course, is something we still see all these years later, where Swedish-born players are seen as cowards. They're seen as non-physical. They're seen as, as, as being wussy and just these are terrible players. And, and it's not accurate. And it's not accurate with Solming. Uh, he was attacked by Dave Schultz in the second game he played in his career. And that was against the Philadelphia Flyers. Basically, it was, we're going to take this guy out of the league. Now, Solming held on. He didn't get beat up by Schultz. He didn't take a beating there. And eventually, he gets respect from the players. And, I mean, it takes a while, but he gets that respect. But Salming would always have that, yeah, but he's Swedish kind of thing attached to his name, which I've never understood. And again, you see that with a lot of Swedish players. That, yeah, but he's a Swede, so, you know. I mean, he's a good player, but he, he's Swedish. So, you know, those guys aren't quite as... I, I don't I don't know. I don't get it. Anyways, 74-75, his second season in the NHL, he plays 60 games, 12 goals, 25 assists, 37 points. In the playoffs... He adds four assists in seven games. He's a second-team All-Star. He's fourth in the Norris. Now, it's noteworthy that he didn't win a Norris trophy. It is also noteworthy that this was the year of a guy named Bobby Orr, right? Pretty good defenseman in the league at that point, so it's forgivable he doesn't get that Norris trophy. 75-76 in 78 games. He has 16 goals, 41 assists, 57 points. He and Ian Turnbull are providing the offense from the blue line for those Maple Leafs. In the playoffs, three goals, four assists, seven points in ten games. The Leafs are contenders for the Stanley Cup. They're one of the better teams in the league. He ends up being second in, or se he ends up on the second team, third in voting for the Norris, and All-Star game as well. So he plays in his first All-Star game that year. 76-77 in 76 games, 12 goals, 66 assists, which is third overall in the NHL. 78 points in the playoffs. He had three goals, six assists for nine points in nine games. Uh, first team All-Star, fifth in Lady Bing voting, gentlemanly player. Uh, fourth in Hart voting, second in Norris, and plays in the All-Star game. So again, as a defenseman to end up finishing top five in Hart voting, that's insane. The Hart is usually won by forwards. So if a defenseman's top five in Hart, he's pretty good. 77-78, plays all 80 games that year. It's the only year he plays all 80 games either. Uh, 16 goals, 60 assists, which is 8th overall in the NHL. 76 points, pretty good for a defenseman. In the playoffs, 2 goals, 2 assists for 4 points in 6 games. Uh, second team All-Star, 4th in Norris voting, and he's in the All-Star game. Also, the 1978 playoffs, he's playing against the New York Islanders. He takes a stick in the eye. And he almost lost vision in that eye as a result. So kind of a, a scary incident there. It was one of what would be a couple of pretty scary incidents in his career. Um, and an argument for wearing shields right there. So the reason they wear those visors is in part because of that. Uh, ugly incidents we don't want to see again in the NHL. 78-79. 78 games played, 17 goals, 56 assists, 73 points. So for a defenseman to get more than 10 goals for this many years in a row is remarkable. In the playoffs, he has an assist in six games played. He's a second team All-Star, seventh in heart voting, and third in the Norris. So again, league MVP, he's top 10. And it is it is quite the story that he's telling. Uh, 78, 70, or 79, 80, I should say. 
74 games played, 19 goals, so almost 20. That's as close as he gets. 52 assists, 71 points. So that's four straight seasons with more than 70 points on the blue line. In the playoffs, he has a goal and an assist for two assi for two points in three games. Uh, second team All-Star and second in Norris voting. So he was second in Norris voting twice. And again, we've talked about voting for trophies and how there might be some flaws there and sometimes the wrong guy. I can't say the wrong guy, but a guy a guy wins when there might have been somebody else who could have been argued to have been better at that position, right? So for for him, those two second place in the Norris trophy voting, that's as close as he gets. 80-81, 72 games played, just the five goals, but 61 assists for 66 points. Three games in the playoffs, two assists, and he's 10th in Norris voting. Now we get into the 80s Toronto Maple Leafs. So... Well, the 70s Toronto Maple Leafs, especially in the mid-70s, were considered full-blown, you know, contenders for the Stanley Cup. Uh, the teams in the 80s, not so much. So he played 69 games in the 81-82 season, 12 goals, 44 assists, 56 points. So his numbers are still very good on teams that are now decreasingly as good. 82-83, 69 games played, 7 goals, 38 assists, 45 points. He plays four playoff games, has a goal, 4 assists for 5 points in the playoffs. 83-84, plays 68 games, 5 goals, 38 assists for 43 points. Uh, really, you know, when you look at the the Toronto Maple Leafs and their numbers and the fact that he is this consistent, it's kind of crazy. 84-85, 73 games played, 6 goals, 33 assists, 39 points. And then from there going forward, uh, he would miss more games and his point totals do drop off a bit. Although in 85-86... If you prorate this out over a full season, it would have been a pretty good year. 41 games, 7 goals, 15 assists, 22 points. In the playoffs, 10 games, 1 goal, 6 assists, 7 points. One of the oddities about the Toronto Maple Leafs of the mid-80s, so 86 and 87 especially, they're not very good teams, but when the playoffs roll around and they qualify because the Norris would have one bad team in the playoffs, they do pretty well. They're capable of pulling off upsets. 86-87 and 56 games played, 4 goals, 16 assists, 20 points. Plays 13 playoff games, which is the most in a playoff season for him. 3 assists. Now this season is an oddity, so he has 56 games played, but he suspended 8 games in the 86-87 season for stating and admitting that he had tried cocaine. He had tried it. And that he now said no. He had no problem saying no but that he did have a problem years before. The NHL wanted to suspend him for the entire season, and they ended up just suspending him for eight games. So when we talk about drug policies now, the NHL is a little bit behind the curve. Uh, it's kind of the, this kind of stuff we're talking about. Basically, the why are you talking about that kind of clause uh, rather than, you know, we, we're glad that you felt comfortable enough to, to speak on this, and uh, we're glad to know that you're... You're, you're clean at this point. It's just, it's weird. Now, November 26th of that year as well, to explain a lot of the other missed games, Gerard Gallant, totally by accident, has his skate strike Borgia Salming in the face. Cuts him for more than 200 stitches. So again, when we talk about the protections that are in place for players now with visors, this is part of the reason why. Scary incident, and thankfully, Salming would come back and play. But, yeah, skate to the face. We never, never want to see that in the game. And so, yeah, twice he is he, he is victim of an incident, uh, first with the eye and then with his face getting cut with a skate. Uh, but he would play the following season, 87-88, 66 games, two goals, 24 assists, 26 points. And in the playoffs, six games, one goal, three assists, four points. Noteworthy during the 87-88 season. On January the 4th of that season, he becomes the first European-born and trained player. And it's important to say and trained because there are Canadian hockey players who might have been born in Germany or in other countries because their father was in the military. Um, that's that's pretty common. And so, or at least it was. But yeah, that's, that's why you'd have to say European-born and trained because there were definitely players born in Europe but their dads weren't European. They were Canadians that were stationed overseas. Now, the following season, 88-89, 63 games played, 3 goals, 17 assists, 20 points. And then the unthinkable happens. As a free agent, he signs somewhere else. On June the 12th of 1989, he signs with the Detroit Red Wings. 
And it's it's one of the weirdest things to see him in Detroit. I remember that. 89-90, plays 49 games, 2 goals, 17 assists, 19 points. The Red Wings are building up, but the Red Wings are not yet the team that they're going to be. The team that they're not that, that juggernaut they would become by the time we reach 97. Even the mid-90s Red Wings, while they weren't having the postseason success, they were still very good in the regular season. So sadly, Salming does not play in the playoffs that year. But overall, 1,148 games played. Pretty good. 150 goals from the blue line. 637 assists, which is 76th overall. Uh, 787 points. In the playoffs, 81 games, 12 goals, 37 assists for 49 points. So almost a full season of playoff games and producing quite well in the playoffs. He won silver at the 1973 World Championships. He won bronze at the 1972 World Championships. He also played in the Olympics. He played in Canada Cups. And in 1996, after retiring in Europe in 1993, he would retire. He would end up in the Hall of Fame in 1996. So his career didn't end in 1990, just as National Hockey League career did. He would play a few more years in Sweden. And then after retiring, start up a clothing business that did pretty well. He really truly was the king. Uh, and he's a player that uh, came through a lot. Because honestly, nobody would have blamed him. If he'd gone onto the ice and you have guys like Dave Schultz attacking you and constantly getting yelled at on the ice, players telling you that you shouldn't be there, and just the fact that he fought through that and he, he proved himself and he ends up in the Hall of Fame, it's it's remarkable. So there you go, the career of Borier Salming, uh, definitely gone too soon, but not to be forgotten. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.